Hello friends, let me take you on a journey to a simpler time when handheld gaming was powered by batteries and consoles were restricted by memory cards and wired controllers. This video is a love letter to all of the games that stay locked forever in our childhood memories, some of which also cause some mental trauma. And today I want to talk about the games that are brushed away as like fever dreams of your former 11 year old self, the games that you may have forgot existed, but trust me, they most definitely did. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video games that time forgot, but we haven't. Number 10. The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap Game Boy Advance 2004 the often overlooked 12th installment in the Legend of Zelda series follows the protagonist Link meeting a magical talking hat who can shrink Link down to the small size of the Minish, which are small humanoid creatures that live in secret. Now here, a wicked sorcerer releases monsters onto Hyrule and turns Princess Zelda into stone before the king inevitably calls on Link to help defeat this evil. Released right at the end of the Game Boy Advance's lifetime, the Minish Cap is often seen as an understated jewel of the top-down Zelda series. The game uses a new minigame mechanic which sees Link collecting shards of kinstones. Now, most characters in the game also have shards of kinstones that can be combined with Link's to unlock new areas and treasure chests. And this really encourages you to explore every nook and cranny, even post-game. The graphics, characters, and gameplay make this title a true masterpiece, especially for a title which was meant to be the last of the top-down Zelda series. This game is another testament to breaking out that dusty Game Boy Advance that is just sitting in your loft, but maybe just don't expect to pick this title up cheap on eBay. Number 9. Wii Music, Nintendo Wii 2008 Wii Music was both developed and published by Nintendo, and the game invites players to control an on-screen band, choosing from a selection of instruments and songs. But the game differs from other rhythm games such as Rock Band and Guitar Hero, as players do not receive a score based on their performance. Now, Wii Music received mixed reviews with some critics stating that the game was too simple and had no goal with the lack of a scoring system. But being a family title, it made sense that everybody should be able to join in and just have fun, but the lack of a goal put many gamers off the concept. After all that's said and done, though, who wouldn't love playing as the guy with the cat costume? Number 8. Nintendogs, Nintendo DS 2005 God, where do you start with this one? It's like Tamagotchi on rocket fuel. And this game blew up when it was released. Effectively, Nintendogs was the perfect answer to can we please get a puppy that the parents could then weaponize. The game was released in 2005 during the extremely popular reign of the Nintendo DS and gave players the opportunity to own virtual dogs that even responded to their names. Well, most of the time. The real-time pet simulation received critical acclaim and even went on to win the 2006 Innovation Award by PC World. All versions of Nintendogs combined have sold 24 million copies, and as such, many had fond memories of this title. Number 7. Blinks the Time Sweeper, Xbox 2002 now this one feels like a weird fever dream until you remember that it actually happened. Xbox's first mascot, Blinks the Time Sweeper, saw the player embarking on a quest through different dimensions of time to defeat the evil time monsters that inhabit them. The game has a very Sega feel to it, and that makes sense when you consider that the creator of Sonic the Hedgehog directed this game. Now Blinks is armed with a magical vacuum cleaner that is used to clear up trash and monsters, just stay with me here, and the player can also use it to slow down, speed up, and pause time in order to puzzles. Now, these mechanics were a very unique feature at the time and helped the player overcome often very difficult enemies. As a youngster, many probably found this game extremely hard, though it likely didn't stop them from playing it over and over because it was relentlessly fun. The sequel to this game, Blink's Two Masters of Time and Space, performed so badly in retail that Microsoft has since dropped the trademark for the Xbox exclusive title, which obviously shatters many dreams about a Blink's 3 being on the horizon. Number 6. Klonoa 2 PlayStation 2 2001 now, Klonoa 2 is a platform game developed and published by Namco. Following the story of the original Klonoa daughter, Phantomiel, Klonoa is a simple platformer that was commended by critics in 2001. The game consists of four kingdoms and the player must help an unknown silhouette save the world around them. But Klonoa 2 is not just a simple side-scroller and uses corkscrews of interesting platforms intertwined by dreamlike enemies. This 2.5D platformer is truly a magical experience. The level design, the music, the characters, and whether you had any attachment to this title in the past, I urge you to experience the Klonoa series firsthand. Number 5. Maximo Ghosts to Glory PlayStation 2 2002 
Ah, there's no Chalaxo when you play Maximo. This hack and slash platformer follows Maximo, a brave king who returns home to find his kingdom is falling apart. His once trusted advisor Achilles has forced Queen Sophia to marry him and he strikes our protagonist down and kills him. Now floating in the underworld, the Grim Reaper offers Maximo his life back in exchange for stopping Achilles' plan to fuel his undead army. This game is kinda like Dark Souls before those games started kicking your butt, but in reality it's definitely just a 3D version of Ghost and goblins, and it is a gem from the golden age of Capcom, although saying that they are also in a golden age of Capcom right now. And you control Maximo through spooky graveyards inhabited by zombies and skeletons and collect coins on the way that can be exchanged for better armor. Sorry, I should say it's really cool centurion armor. Now more modern gamers may be turned off by the game's high difficulty and relatively simple design, but I urge you to give it a go because this game has aged like a fine wine. Number 4. Donkey Konga GameCube 2004 now, I would argue that this is one of many players' all-time favourite games, but you know what? That doesn't stop it from being utterly bananas weird. Before Guitar Hero, we had Donkey Konga, the interactive rhythm game consisting of two plastic bongos that were wired up to the GameCube. Pretty much every social gathering that my friends held featured this game, and classics like September by Earth, Wind and & Fire and All Right by Supergrass were often on the set list and had us feeling like rock stars giving people what they wanted was apparently bongos. Donkey Konga has all the ingredients of a bizarre Japanese arcade game, and it is a true pioneer of the rhythm game genre. Although the retail success of the title was questionable, it was definitely one of the most enjoyable party games out there. It was a rhythm game before rhythm games were successful, and you will not regret trying this hilariously absurd title today. Number 3. Croc 2 Game Boy Color 1999 after the catastrophic failure the original Croc endured on the Game Boy Color, THQ decided to double down on its losses and have Natsume create a sequel. Hitting stores only a year after its predecessor, some critics felt like the relatively short development time is vindictive of its quality. Although it's impossible to feel sad whilst listening to Croc 2's chipper 8-bit soundtrack, some players thought that beneath the rudimentary puzzle solving and item collecting, the game shared a likeness to a walking simulator and was labelled boring. But this was the kind of game that many would play in restaurants just like waiting for food, so serving a purpose just to fill time. And you know what, it's developed a cult following online that is likely powered mostly by nostalgia. But one thing that you cannot deny is that it existed. Which brings me to my next point. Number 2. Bubsy in Claw's Encounter of the Third Kind – Sega Genesis 1993 now, there is a script in front of me here where I will describe what Bubsy in Claw's Encounter of the Third Kind is, was, and forever shall be, but you know what? I'm going to sum it up in a different form, which is this. Oh, God, Bubsy! And number one, Golden Sun, Game Boy Advance 2001. In 2001, Japanese video game developer Camelot Software Planning gave birth to one of the most immersive RPGs ever, Golden Sun. Now, Camelot already boasted a monopoly on Japanese RPG games with the first of its kind Beyond the Beyond, which released on the PS1 a few years prior. Now, Golden Sun was considered to have had a huge development time for a Game Boy Advance title, not seeing the light of day for a whopping 18 months. The game was so big that it was ultimately split into two installments, Golden Sun and Golden Sun The Lost Age, due to the size of not being able to fit on a single game cartridge. The original game sold over 1 million units worldwide and is still viewed as an underrated classic. And if you have a taste for retro turn-based combat, cryptic puzzles and plenty of dialogue, well you know what my friend, there's no option than to bust out the dusty old Game Boy SP and fire up this bad boy. And there we go my friends, those were 10 video games that time forgot, but we haven't. I hope that you enjoyed that and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always I've been Jules, you have been awesome, remember you can go over to Future Game Show or FGS where I do all of my gaming content going forward and I hope to see you over there. Big love and goodbye.